It's a pleasure to be here with you this morning. I'm going to talk about a couple of major changes that are taking place in the governmental arena. So one of the first changes that GASB has done recently, and we're in the midst of implementing right now, is to get those post-retirement benefits for pensions on the face of the financial statements. Now, in the past, there have been disclosures about those pension commitments in the footnotes. However, those disclosures didn't seem to draw enough attention to policymakers as far as what those <laughs> promises were, um, how significant they were, and whether assets were being set aside to actually fund those promises as they go forward. So the first major change we made was in the, in the pension contributions, and they take effect this year. So pension liabilities will appear on the face of the financial statements. Now, many times you hear about pensions, and what you hear about is the pensions are funded. And what they're talking about is the amount of assets that are set aside to help pay for that liability. So many times you will hear a plan is 75% funded, 50% funded, or some other percentage funded. And what they're talking about is how many assets do you have set aside and what percentage of that is it of the total liability that you have. And so what will happen on the financial statements is every government will measure their total pension liability under the actuarial method. And then they will look at the fair value of their investments. To the extent that the, net, the pension liability exceeds the fair value, they will recognize a net pension liability on the face of their financial statements. Now, in some cases, the fair value of their investments might actually exceed their pension liability, total pension liability. In that case, the government would recognize a net pension asset. So either way, depending on the funding status, the real key is that they will actually have the ability to take a look at the face of the financial statements, see what promises have been made, what those promises are estimated to cost in the future, and then take a look at what assets have actually been set aside to cover those benefit payments in the, in, in the future. Now, in order to do that offset, those assets have to be set aside in what we call a trust. And that trust has to have three conditions met. One, it has to be irrevocable. In other words, you can't change the, those assets for some other purpose. They have to be dedicated to pension payments in the future. And they have to be also legally protected from creditors. So if the conditions are met, then you can do the offset method and recognize a net pension liability. Now keep in mind the vast majority of governments are not fully funded. Most of them are only partially funded. So most governments will actually see a net pension liability on the face of their financial statements. The new pension standards have not changed the economics of pensions. They're exactly the same as they were before. However, these new standards, I think, have definitely elevated the discussion about pension promises and what it's going to cost in the future, and also elevated the discussion about the need to set aside the assets to fund those liabilities so to make sure that you have the assets set aside to actually make those payments in the future. And the real key factor will be as we go forward, this particular accounting will help users of financial statements understand how well they're funded because the key will be is that net pension liability growing <coughs> or shrinking. If it's growing, obviously the, the commitment to make those funding payments is not there. However, if it's shrinking, they're at least headed in the right direction in helping to reduce that unfunded liability as they go forward. Now, the other project that we're working on and just approved recently is a companion project to the pensions. And the other retiree benefits primarily relate to retiree health care. That is the big ticket item when it comes to the government arena. And so what we've passed on this other post-retirement benefits is also referred to as OPEB. We just recently passed a, a new standard that will do the same thing that the pension standard did. It will take an actuarial look at what those promises are for other retiree benefits. It will look at the assets that have been set aside and once again recognize a net liability or a net asset on the face of the financial statements. There's one thing to keep in mind though, while pensions have typically been underfunded, OPEB, these other retiree benefits, have typically not been funded at all. They're typically pay as you go. So in many cases, what will happen is a government will measure its total OPEB liability, and then that total OPEB liability will essentially equal their net 
OPEB liability because there's no off assets to actually offset against them because they have not generally set aside those particular assets to fund those liabilities. So this will complete the suite of what we call standards for post-retirement benefits, both pension and any other types of benefits that are actually provided to retirees. I will tell you that the vast majority of governments might be surprised when they take a look at their OPEB liability because they don't have assets set aside. In some cases, their net OPEB liability will exceed their net pension liability, which is gathering all the attention today. A key decision uh, that every government's gonna have to be dealing with, as I work with governments, I tell them that the two biggest fiscal challenges they will face over the next, fiscal, next few fiscal years will be pensions and OPEB.